Hey, um, here we go. Circuits. Things are crazy in the Harmon house this morning. My daughter's going wild upstairs. And anyhow, um, I'm just going to, what, what, what do we need to know? Well, a few things you have to know. Not too much. Um, really, the whole thing with the circuit that I want you to focus on for, uh, you know, this COVID time is the just basic definition of current and Ohm's law. And then kind of the, the concept of, oh, let me get the focus lock on here. Sorry, my bad. Kind of get the concept of voltage um, in terms of what it does. And this is, you know, we did this in the lab. We Yes, the lab, that huge simulation packet had series and parallel um, circuits, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal with that too much. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about like, you know, light bulbs and maybe maybe power as well. The power used in a circuit. So that's pretty much what we're going to focus on is voltage, current, power, and um, resistance. All right. So a circuit is a collection of, you know, a power source, electricity source, like a battery, you know, so good old battery positive negative some wires and some kind of circuit element so a circuit element is a light bulb or it could be something called a resistor which you know i show you at school um anything you can plug in is essentially you know uh a circuit element right so this could be this could be an outlet in your house right the way that works is one of the prongs is there the other prong is that one so when you plug something in right the third prong is a separate path to ground, but I'm not going to talk about this. So you say this is like an outlet in your house, two prongs, right? You plug something in, for instance, you plug in your, uh, um, your, I don't know what, you know, uh, hair dryer, right? Which looks like a gun. That's bizarre. But anyhow, let's say you plug in a hair dryer. Um, I always liked, here, let me make it look, look more like a hair dryer. That'd be better all right so uh the two prongs that plug in you'll know there's always like two wires right like i have my charge my i have some battery chargers right here the two prongs each prong goes into one of these two wires this is actually two wires here one of the wires goes to this prong the other wire goes to this prong uh it goes up into the battery charger and flows through the circuit of the battery charger so what's happening here is the electricity flows right out of the battery, <laughs> which the battery in this case is, you know, the power plant is, is essentially, or the circuit breaker down in your basement, um, circuit board down in your base basement, which is attached to the, the, the uh, power grid. So the circuit current comes in, it runs through a coil in here, it powers a fan, it, it loses a lot of energy in the um, hair dryer, it flows out back to ground right so when you plug something in you're making a complete circuit for the thing you're plugging in sometimes you have to flick a switch to complete that circuit and get the current to start flowing but sometimes you plug something in and it automatically just starts working like your cell phone charger right there's no switch on that you just plug it in and it starts immediately flowing current even if your cell phone's not plugged in your cell phone charger draws a little bit of current so it's best if you like if you have a charging station at home or you charge like your family cell phones or Anything like that, it's good to have it in a power strip and, you know, it saves energy if you turn the power strip off during the day when you're not using it. It really, really does save some, some electricity. But anyway, um, so we have kind of three variables. I'm just going to go back to the basic schematic. So batteries, we draw like this. The longer line represents the positive side of the battery. A bulb we draw like this. It could be a bulb or a resistor. A resistor looks like a squiggle, right? And this is called a schematic. Okay, so the battery has a set voltage, which is the electrochemical potential between whatever the anode and cathode of that wet cell is. All right, so all different batteries have different mm -hmm. voltages, right? So I have a bunch of rechargeable batteries I happen to have just sitting here. Um... 1.2 volts 220 milliamp hours so I, can, I should talk a little bit about what that means 2200 milliamp hours right that's what this this is a nickel metal hydride battery 
just any rechargeable double a 1.2 volts um nickel metal hydrate that is you know indication of what chemicals are inside of there um a regular alkaline battery uh for instance just a regular old double a or triple a which i could probably find one pretty quick here um got this old flashlight to get these things for free all the time from like harbor freight or whatever oh look at that this one's all corroded and nasty but this battery says Oh man, some Chinese thing doesn't even... Oh, it does have a voltage. I don't see... I can't see the voltage. It's all corroded. Usually alkaline batteries are more like 1.5 volts, 1.4 volts, something like that. Um, anyhow. So, depending on the <coughs> electrochemistry, you have different voltages. Um... Lithium ion batteries are typically like 3.1 volts, I want to say. It, it, again, oh, here's a better AA battery. Let's see. Let's see if this one says on it. 1.5 volts, it says on it. Yeah, Wegmans AAA battery. Um, 1.5 volts. All right, so a little hard to see because I didn't change the focus. So this has a set voltage potential difference it can supply. So let's say it's 1.5 volts. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, a volt is a joule per coulomb. So what this volt, what the voltage tells us is that um, this battery can push with 1.5 joules of energy, like potential energy, so to speak, kind of like gravity has uh, a certain amount of potential energy stored up in the field per coulomb of charge. So a coulomb of charge is a lot of charge. So an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, gets its kinetic energy from this voltage, and this voltage tells us how much kinetic energy can be given to the electron that flows through the circuit. Now keep in mind, what really happens in a circuit is electrons flow out of the negative side of the battery and go around the circuit, they get attracted towards the positive side of the battery. So it's like electrons in the wire get pushed through the wire slowly towards the positive side and they get pulled towards the positive side of the battery. In fact, an electric field gets set up in the wire which comes out of the positive side of the battery into the negative. So that's what really happens. Electrons flow on the negative side, but we think of current as flowing out of the positive side. So it's more like we we follow the electric field that's set up in the wire, right? So if like positive charges could move through metal, then they would move this way, right? So that's how we t deal with current. The symbol for current is a capital I. So V, capital V is the symbol for voltage. Here, let me um, let me draw this a little bit smaller, and I'll make a table for you, kind of keeping track of all this stuff. Okay, all right, all right. So we've got a battery. I'm gonna redraw that, the bulb. All right, it's got a V. It drives current I, and the bulb has a certain resistance R. So the symbol here, V, represents voltage. And the units are also V or volts, all right, which are a joule per coulomb, all right. So I guess it's kind of like a little table. I don't know. Um, current cap symbol is capital I. It's current, and the unit is an A, which is an ampere. And this is the amount of charge flowing per second, which is so it's a coulomb per second. All right, coulomb per second. Amount of amps flowing. So the amount of charge I can figure out flowing through the wire per second. And then the other one is resistance. R, light bulbs, devices, they all have a resistance, all right? So the more energy these things use, the more resistance they have. And the way we figure out something's resistance is you make a voltage versus current graph of it, right? We, we turn up the voltage and see what happens to the current. So the steeper this slope, the uh, higher the resistance. So the slope of the voltage current is resistance. All right, so the units are what we call an ohm, an omega. 
ohm, but really what they are is a volt per amp. So it's how much energy does this use per per amp of current flowing. So something with higher resistance will dissipate much more energy, you know, use heat up more if it's, um, if current's flowing. Um, this is why you gotta be careful sometimes with like cords that are too long. Like sometimes if you, if you charge your phone with a long cord, the charging brick will get dang hot. For instance, I have these lights in my in my physics lab or not my physics lab, my basement here that I that I use sometimes when I'm making um, videos. And uh, I'm not using them anymore because I'm gonna actually give them to somebody that um, is gonna make much better use of them than I. I hope. I hope he wants them. Uh, and the cord for these things is long. When I plug these things in. And I and I run them, that that brick gets wicked hot. It gets very hot. And it's because it's pushing current through this long cord. The longer a cord is, the more resistive it is, the hotter, the more the the more energy it's going to dissipate. So the power supply, right? The power supply, the little brick, actually compensates for that, right? It has to push harder if it encounters more resistance. That's, that's kind of the in interesting thing here, right? It's going to deliver two amps no matter what. And if the wire's long, well, that's more resistance. It's going to have to, it's gonna have to uh, um, really work harder to push it through. And how does it work? Well, it, it has to push more current, essentially. It's, it's, it has to push harder to higher voltage to get the current in there. Um, so anyway, th this brick will get hot with this cord. So we got to be careful. Um, this video is gonna gonna cut out soon here, so um, uh, let me let me pause it here and see if I can clean some stuff up, and then come back and make a part two to this. All right, how do they all tie together? Well, it's this graph right here, Ohm's law. Let me let me just try to get this. So if we do y equals m x plus b here, we get v equals r i. Y equals m x plus b. And this is Ohm's law, All right? And the units work out nicely, right? Oh, volt per amp, amp.